NASA has finally dropped the biggest hint yet about a potential date for Starship's second test flight in a hectic week, where officials from the USFWS were seen visiting Starbase. Could we finally be on the precipice of witnessing history? Let's find out. It has been precisely six months, marking half a year since the launch of Ship 24 and Booster 7. This event coincided with the initiation of the US Fish and Wildlife Service's review of Starship's environmental impact statement, focusing on the Starbase launch site and its vicinity in Boca Chica. The delay in this review process seems excessively long, especially considering the actual damage suffered by SpaceX's Starbase and the adjacent wetlands. Nevertheless, it's a positive development that the review is finally underway, albeit belatedly. This delay, though frustrating, might indicate that the next Starship launch is on the horizon. The lingering question remains, when will the FWS conclude its survey? This week, SpaceX initiated the cleanup of concrete debris resulting from the inaugural Starship launch. Personnel from the Fish and Wildlife Service and Texas Parks were observed on site, presumably overseeing the cleanup efforts. For those questioning why SpaceX didn't undertake this cleanup sooner, it's worth noting that they required official permission to proceed. The investigation mandated by this approval will encompass an evaluation of the impact on endangered species, as stated by the FWS. The cleanup process commences with the removal of debris and hazardous materials. SpaceX, in adherence to the recommendations of the USFWS, is taking steps to restore the affected area. This restoration may involve activities such as replanting native vegetation and rehabilitating the impacted ecosystems. SpaceX is actively collaborating with the US Fish and Wildlife Service, USFWS, to ensure strict adherence to all regulatory requirements and environmental standards. This close partnership guarantees that the cleanup process aligns with both legal mandates and environmental guidelines. Once the cleanup is concluded, regular monitoring and assessments persist to guarantee the full recovery of the affected area. This ongoing effort requires continuous cooperation between SpaceX and the FWS to track the ecosystem's recovery and overall health. Furthermore, this comprehensive process involves the analysis of air and water quality, potential soil contamination, and the impact on local wildlife. Looking ahead to the hearing before the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Space and Science, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service indicated that their regulatory approval process for the second Starship test flight might extend until the spring of 2024. In a statement released on Tuesday, an FWS spokesperson revealed that their agency had received the final biological assessment from the FAA on October 5th, and they have a maximum of 30 days to review it thoroughly. In August, the FAA sent a letter to the FWS requesting the reinitiation of the Endangered Species Act consultation under Section 7. This reinitiation is mandated when there are significant changes in a project's impacts, such as surpassing previously issued take limits, the introduction of new information on listed species, or the listing of a new species. The FWS spokesperson explained that when major alterations in effects analysis or changes in the FWS's biological opinion occur, a new consultation is conducted. Regarding SpaceX's reinitiation with the FAA, one of the considerations involves the operation of a new water deluge system. This system was among the 63 corrective actions identified during SpaceX's investigation following the unsuccessful launch of the first integrated flight test on April 20, 2023. The system has been utilized in a few instances, including during static fire tests of Booster 9, which is slated to be the next to fly for SpaceX alongside Ship 25. On Tuesday, SpaceX unstacked the rocket after stacking it just a day earlier. In a social media post, SpaceX announced, Starship fully stacked while the team prepares for a launch rehearsal. We continue to work with the FAA on a launch license. The process for obtaining the license, however, might still take a considerable amount of time. After the 30-day review period of the final biological assessment by the FAA, the FWS has 135 days to issue an amended biological opinion. This period includes the formal consultation phase, which can last up to 90 days and the crafting of the biological opinion, which has a maximum duration of 45 days. A spokesperson from the FAA noted that any necessary environmental mitigations for the water deluge system would be determined upon completion of the environmental review. This adjusted timeline coincides with Bill Gersten Meyer, SpaceX's Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability, preparing to testify before the Senate Subcommittee on Space and Science. The upcoming panel, featuring testimonies from Gersten Meyer, representatives from Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, National Aerospace Solutions and CS Consulting will cover a wide range of topics, from suborbital flights to lunar surface habitats. Of particular significance for SpaceX and the Starship program is the selection of the rocket as the Human Landing System, HLS, for NASA's Artemis III and Artemis IV missions, making the discussion crucial for the future of SpaceX's space exploration endeavors. 
NASA has outlined specific requirements before authorizing its astronauts to fly aboard Starship, including ship-to-ship -ship refueling demonstrations and an uncrewed lunar landing. However, a senior SpaceX official revealed in a recent interview that a backlog of FAA work has forced them to make difficult decisions about prioritizing their licensing process for launch vehicles. Securing the license for Starship has become a critical aspect of the Artemis program's progress. The SpaceX official emphasized the urgency, stating, At this point, licensing for Starship is a critical path item for the Artemis program and our execution. Looking ahead into the next year, we really need to operate that program at a higher cadence of flights, ideally with six to eight month turns. Any delays, even seemingly small ones, accumulate over time, jeopardizing our lead. Continuous delays in each test flight add up, and we risk falling behind, possibly allowing China to land on the moon before we do warned Gersten Meyer, underscoring the significance of timely and efficient execution. When questioned by Senator Ted Cruz, a Texas Republican, about the timeline for the Human Landing System, HLS, version of Starship, Gersten Meyer expressed difficulty in providing a definitive answer. He stressed that the responsibility should lie with SpaceX as a private company, urging for the freedom to develop at the fastest pace possible. Let us be the ones driving the development, not being driven by regulatory oversight, he emphasized. Gersten Meyer highlighted the challenges SpaceX faces in resource allocation due to uncertainty about when the launch license will be granted. Despite putting in extra shifts and preparing the vehicle, the inability to fly has created complications. He noted that SpaceX might conduct additional ground tests, such as a wet dress rehearsal while awaiting the license. However, the ongoing regulatory uncertainty hampers their ability to establish a more productive and efficient schedule. Given the sluggish pace of regulatory approval, there is a looming risk of significant delays in getting Starship ready. This potential delay, extending to a year or more, has raised concerns among NASA officials, prompting them to closely monitor SpaceX's progress in recent months. In early August, Jim Free, the Associate Administrator of the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate at NASA, stated that there was still time for SpaceX to meet NASA's guidelines for Artemis III. However, if they fail to do so, NASA is prepared to conduct a non-landing mission for Artemis III, and delay the lunar touchdown until at least Artemis IV. Despite Elon Musk's announcement in early May that Starship would be ready for a new flight within six to eight weeks, the summer has passed without a launch. SpaceX did conduct significant engine tests for Starship in preparation for the next flight. However, the US Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, cautioned in late September that the required regulatory processes for addressing issues from the first flight are not yet complete. Although SpaceX claims to have implemented all 57 actions required for the next flight and completed its investigation, the FAA has not yet granted a license for the second launch. Additionally, SpaceX needs environmental approval from the US Fish and Wildlife Service. Once these crucial items are resolved, SpaceX is poised to launch swiftly. Musk has affirmed that Starship is technically ready to go, emphasizing the regulatory and environmental approvals as the remaining hurdles before the next flight can proceed. A recent development from NASA seems to hint at the potential date for Starship's next flight. Following a rigorous rehearsal earlier this week where SpaceX meticulously tested nearly all pre-flight systems for the Starship rocket, significant progress appears to be underway for the much-anticipated launch. The pace surrounding the Starship launch has notably quickened, especially after a Coast Guard advisory to mariners, cautioning them about a possible rocket launch in Boca Chica, Texas, scheduled for the first week of November. While the advisory alone doesn't guarantee a specific test timeline, SpaceX's subsequent test on Tuesday, coupled with a placeholder from NASA and an updated Coast Guard notice, strongly suggests that SpaceX is gearing up for the test soon. This indication coincided with a visit by the Forest and Wildlife Service to the Starship launch pad, further underlining the momentum building towards the imminent launch. What made the upcoming Starship launch even more apparent was NASA's recent booking of an eight-day placeholder for the WB-57 imaging aircraft. This detail echoed a pattern seen before the first Starship test flight in April. Key indicators, such as NASA placeholders for their WB-57 airplane, are signals that a launch might be imminent. The WB-57 aircraft, a specialized NASA vehicle, conducts high-altitude reconnaissance flights equipped with features like infrared imaging. NASA regularly uses this aircraft to monitor crew returns on SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. Earlier this year, after a FOIA request, NASA released high-definition footage of the Starship April test flight captured by this plane. Additionally, the Coast Guard's updated notice to mariners provided a crucial time frame for launch activities from Boca Chica, Texas. Similar to the NASA placeholder, the recent notice from the Coast Guard doesn't explicitly state a SpaceX rocket launch. However, 
Considering SpaceX is the sole company launching rockets from the site, there's little doubt that tentative timelines for the second Starship test flight are being established behind the scenes. The updated Coast Guard notice emphasizes warnings to mariners about potential hazards related to rocket launching activities. These hazards include risks from free-falling debris and descending vehicles or vehicle components under various means of control. The notice states that placeholders will be in effect every day from November 1st onward until conditions allow for a launch. These hazards are expected to be present starting from November 6th, as per the Coast Guard's information. Additionally, SpaceX recently completed Starship tanking and testing on the launch pad, including the much-anticipated water deluge system trial. Following these tests, representatives from the FWS visited the site early in the morning. The water deluge test appeared to be well-planned, with certain system tanks having been filled earlier. This suggests a collaborative effort between SpaceX and the FWS to assess the impact on the surrounding area after conducting multiple water deluge tests. From publicly available information, it's clear that the water deluge system has posed the most substantial challenge for the upcoming second Starship orbital test flight. Despite this hurdle, SpaceX has displayed swift progress in reconstructing the launch pad and integrating the water system. Remarkably, these advancements have been achieved within a few months of the April test attempt. While awaiting clearance from the FAA, SpaceX has not remained idle. The company is actively involved in ground testing of another Starship second stage prototype as part of its collaborative efforts with NASA for the lunar landing system development. While the necessary formalities are being completed, SpaceX has continued rigorous testing of the Starship in preparation for the upcoming launch. Recently, Ship 25 was detached from Booster 9 after completing a complex fueling test and launch rehearsal earlier in the week. This process involved the activation of a towering structure nicknamed Mechazilla, equipped with giant mechanical arms. These arms carefully dismantled the largest rocket ever built, lifting the 50-meter-tall second stage and spacecraft off the Super Heavy Booster 9. This destacking, hopefully the final one before the launch, allows SpaceX to address the remaining gaps in the Starship's heat shield. Additionally, thorough inspections will be conducted to ensure the spacecraft is fully prepared for flight. Prior to the launch date, the flight termination system must be certified. Once these steps are completed, Starship may take flight again from South Texas as soon as November 6th. However, Starship enthusiasts should manage their expectations for an early November launch. The US Fish and Wildlife Service revealed in an email statement on Thursday that they have recently begun the consultation under the Endangered Species Act with the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, on October 19th. The FWS now has up to 135 days to create an updated biological opinion regarding the impact of Starship and its launches on the local environment. However, the agency stated in the email that they do not anticipate taking the full allotted time. The nature of such testing is unpredictable and subject to change. Additionally, SpaceX is still awaiting a Federal Aviation Administration license to launch the spacecraft. Before the FAA approves the launch license, SpaceX must address all safety, environmental and other regulatory requirements, as emphasized by FAA spokesperson Steve Cowell in an email. The Starship program is undergoing an additional environmental review process, according to Cowell. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is currently reviewing and consulting with the FAA about a draft update of the biological assessment under the Endangered Species Act. Despite these regulatory hurdles, SpaceX has continued its testing efforts for the 400-ton tall spacecraft and its launch pad. On Tuesday, SpaceX conducted a flight-like rehearsal, fueling the Starship and Super Heavy booster with over 10 million pounds of propellant. During this test, SpaceX also examined its recently installed deluge system, designed to spray hundreds of thousands of gallons of water across the launch pad's bottom. This system serves to dampen the noise, heat, and force generated by the Super Heavy booster's 33 Raptor engines. However, the Fish and Wildlife Service is currently evaluating the environmental impacts of the deluge system. This system disperses tons of water, which have been exposed to heat, chemicals, and contaminants into sensitive wetland habitats. These habitats are home to endangered species, including piping plovers, red knots, and sea turtles. Environmental advocates have raised concerns about SpaceX's deluge system, pointing out that the company lacks proper permitting for it. Under the Clean Water Act, it is illegal to discharge pollutants into waters without a permit. According to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, which enforces the Clean Water Act in Texas, SpaceX currently holds only a stormwater permit for the launch site. This raises questions about the legality of the deluge system's operations. SpaceX's journey toward the second launch of the fully stacked Starship has been challenging. The previous Starship flight on April 20th resulted in significant damage, obliterating the concrete under the launch pad and creating a rock tornado that scattered debris for thousands of yards. The explosion also generated a dust plume that reached Port Isabel, located six and a half miles away. After reaching an altitude of 24 miles, 
the rocket lost control, tumbling and eventually exploding over the Gulf of Mexico. In response to the environmental impact, the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department have been working to clean up debris on state-owned lands, minimizing the impact on the habitat as much as possible. SpaceX finds itself in a waiting game, with the completion of the review by the Fish and Wildlife Service, FWS, marking one milestone and the subsequent approval from the FAA for the second test flight being another hurdle to cross. This process could take anywhere from a few weeks to several more months. However, the situation is complicated further by an ongoing lawsuit, which is still navigating administrative processes, potentially causing additional delays. However, SpaceX is continuing to maximize its time by developing its revolutionary spacecraft even further. The Starbase facility is a hive of activity, where multiple new Starship vehicles and super heavy boosters are being produced and rigorously tested. Progress seems to have reached at least Starship 31 in the manufacturing line, with several more vehicles likely in earlier stages of production. Despite numerous obstacles, SpaceX continues to push forward, preparing for the second Starship test flight while navigating the complexities of regulatory and legal proceedings. What do you think? Could we finally witness Starship's second test flight in two weeks? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.